What so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Saints, Prophetess Don O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heart Bound Corner here. I have a couple words actually I want to share with you. I wasn't planning on doing a video. You know, our plans and God's plans are two different things. But this is a word that I, I feel the Holy Spirit wants me to share with you. In fact, He gave me one word yesterday and I didn't share it. Um, he gave me another word today and I said, well, maybe I better share it because. Um, I believe something is getting ready to take place. Now it's getting dark in here. I think it's going to rain, but as long as we can see here. I want to play this song. Um, we're not going to worship today, but we're going to play Jesus at the Center um, by, by Darlene. I want to play that because it's not about you. It's not about me and my plans. It's not about the Easter Bunny because we're not celebrating the Bunny like the world is. The world is celebrating Easter Bunnies. We're celebrating Jesus Christ, all right, and how he died and he saved you and I eternal life. You know, we, we don't talk about Jesus no more. We talk about all the worldly things that are happening. All right, well, let's play this song because I like this. Jesus at the center. Just worship him, saints. Is he at the center of your life? Make him the center today. Welcome you here, precious Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. Jesus. 
Jesus be the center of your church. Yes, be the center of our church, Lord. Jesus be the center of your church. And every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess you.
I wanted to sing that one this morning. Praise the Lord. All right, let's pray. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Then I'm going to share some news with you before we get into the two words I want to give you. Father, we just come together in agreement, Lord. Thank you for this day, oh God. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice in it and be glad, Lord. No matter what's going on in our lives, Lord, we'll offer up to you a sacrifice of praise, Lord, and thanksgiving, Lord. Thank you, Father, for dying for us, for, for dying, raising, coming back to life, Lord. You are alive. Jesus is alive. And you are well, Lord. We thank you for salvation, Lord. Where would we be without you, Lord? We'd be lost. We'd be dead if it wasn't for you, Lord. Thank you for saving us, oh God. We could have been one of those ones you didn't save, but you have saved us, Lord. We thank you, Father, for that. We praise you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace, your loving kindness, Lord. That's new every day, Lord. Where would we be, oh God? You are so good to all of us, Lord. We forget to stop and thank you and praise you, Lord. We in America forget to praise you, Lord. And Father, we praise you right now, Lord. We praise you and thank you for everything you have given us, Lord. The food, the water, the roof over our heads, our jobs, this economy, our freedoms, Lord. We have freedoms in our nation right now, Lord. We thank you for our freedom, Lord. We thank you, Lord. The enemy is trying to take our freedoms away. We thank you, Lord, that you bless us with freedom in America, Lord. And Father, freedom of speech, we can speak, Lord. Father, I believe that, that this is the time you're allowing this because we're about to see a change. Things are about to change, Lord. And I believe, Lord, but salvation has come, Father. There are those that still need to come to Christ, Lord. There's a great, big revival that's getting ready to take place, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're getting ready to, to send us out and use us two by two, Lord, in these last days, right before the return of the Lord. I believe, like John the Baptist, prepare you the way for the Lord, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe we're about to see something, saints. Let me give you some news here, real quick here. I pray these open up and don't cause problems here. Let's look at these earthquakes real quick. Um, you know, when I got a lot of these open, it's hard. Sometimes they, they give me problems. I don't want to lose our live program here. Um, all right, let's um, go through these earthquakes real quick. See, you know, we've been getting a lot of earthquakes that have been happening. What happened to the, um, hold on a second. Give me one minute. Not pulling up, keeps pulling up something else. Hmm. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it. Hold on one minute. Oh. I lost it. Um, mm. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're still seeing small storms, swarms in Alaska, California 2.2 that was in the geysers about 30 minutes ago in the Parkfield, California 2.0, jumping down here 4.5, Fiji Islands two hours ago, 3.7 Alaska three hours ago. Now I'm not reading all of them, I'm giving you a link so you can look at it, 4.2 China three hours ago, um, M Lazy Mountain Alaska 1.3 four hours ago. Big ones, 5.0 Samoa Islands region, five hours ago, 5.1 Tonga, five hours ago, 3.4 in Japan, that was five hours ago, um, Puerto Rico, 2.6, six hours ago, 5.3 New Zealand, and a 5.1 in New Zealand, six hours ago, uh, Hawaii had a volcano, 2.2, eight hours ago, I mean, these are like every few minutes you're seeing this, and you know, California, Alaska, still small swarms. I think we've had a big one in California. I mean, not California, Alaska. Was it the other day at 5.6 or something like that? 2.6 in Puerto Rico nine hours ago. Uh, yeah, 2.6 Puerto Rico. Oklahoma, 2.3 nine hours ago. 4.3 in Papua New Guinea. Now, I've told you before, the, the USGS also likes to downgrade. They don't want you to know what's going on. Dominican Republic 3.09 hours ago, 2.3 in Puerto Rico 9 hours ago, 2.0 in Nevada that was 10 hours ago. 
2.8 in Dominican Republic 11 hours ago. Alaska at a 4.3. That was 12 hours ago. 4.6 in Papua New Guinea at 12 hours ago. And then um, there's some smaller ones. 2.2, 13 hours. And you'll see a bunch. I saw a bunch yesterday right in a row. Washington had a small one at 0.9, 13 hours ago. Fiji at a 4.6, 13 hours ago. So that's what's going on with the earthquakes. Now I want to talk to you for a minute, you know, about that. Um, there's supposed to be a, a rare double moon um, this right before, um, I believe, April 1st. Okay, there's supposed to be a, a double blue moon. All right. They've had them before, but there's supposed to be a, a double moon rising. Also, I want to talk to you for a minute about that um, space station that's supposed to be happening. You know, they say it's going to hit hit Earth. I'm wondering, and I'm just saying, could this possibly be a false flag? Maybe they're telling you and I that this is happening and um, because something is getting ready to happen. You know, have you heard heard about Israel now? Israel, I'm just, I'm reading you the headlines. I'm not going to share all this with you. This was on Daily Mail. A siege in Gaza, 12 killed by Israel forces, 370 injured and drones dropped tear gas on thousands of Palestinians as they swarmed the border, burned photos of Trump and vowed to protest for weeks until U.S. Embassy moves to Jerusalem. And that's supposed to happen in, I think, May or something like that. Hundreds injured as Palestinian protesters clashed with Israel military at Gaza border. All right. So this is what's going on over there. All right. So we're seeing that. Then um, now this has come out too. Have you heard about this? Um, the, the um, what do you call it? Is, and, and, um, I can't get the words out. Russia. Saying two nuclear missile against tests launched by Russia, they're saying, as Putin brags of invulnerable arsenal. A new intercontinental ballistic missile held by Russian President Vladimir Putin as being able to fly over the North or South Poles and strike any target in the world reportedly was test launched for the second time on Friday. Now, I I'm just telling you, now, that I believe there's something going on here. Okay, I believe they know something, okay, and they're not telling you and I. So, I mean, we, we can see a lot of things here. I mean, are we going to see something, a missile? Are we going to see a, a huge earthquake take place all at once? I mean, remember I told you we're trying to divide Israel too. They're trying to bring that peace tree. Are we going to see something happening with California breaking off into two. Are we going to see, remember that one, the Lord told me that Israel, that um, California was going to be plunged into the sea. And, and I heard him in the gym say it's going to fall into the ocean. I said, nah. And I looked it up and Bram said that he heard on ham radio because he had this vision. He had fallen off a horse and he was having visions in the hospital. This was back in, what, 1937 or so? He was having these visions about men with long hair, beards, and women with short skirts. And back then, they didn't have that. And then he saw some lady on the strip, on the um, Hollywood strip, and he said, I don't even know if she's there now. You know, and then he heard on a ham radio, and the guy was talking about moving away from California, and he was um, falling in, into, the, into the ocean. I mean, it was... He was falling into the ocean while he was talking, and it was just very sad. It made me cry. So I know God's getting ready to do something. I don't know what it's going to be. If it's going to be some, some with the sun. I remember back in 2015, I said EMP is headed our way. I mean, it could be multiple things we could see all at once. We're going to see the something take place. Now, I know God hasn't told me exactly what is going to happen. It could be more than one thing. It could be. An, it's going to be an economic collapse, too. It's one of them. I do know that. David Wilkins doesn't talk about it. He keeps talking to me about an economic collapse. Okay? In fact, I've got a dream in a minute I'm going to read to you. Somebody had this dream. Now, I'm not reading their interpretation, but I'm going to give you an interpretation that God was speaking to me about. And I thought it was incredible. It's got to do with Donald, President Donald Trump. We're going to talk a minute about that. All right. So, let me read just a little more here. So, Vladimir Putin, I guess he, he had done an intercontinental ballistic missile on Friday. 
A Russian defense minister released a video. They showed a video purposely showing the, the Sarma ICBM blasting off in spectacular fashion from the from their I guess over there in Russia. The move coming just hours after the Kremlin announced it would expel 60 American diplomats and close the U.S. consulate in St. Petersburg in retaliation for U.S. measures taken in response to the poisoning of the ex-Russian spy and his daughter in Britain. Now, if you remember, President Donald Trump, I heard that he called him and congratulated him for winning the election. Now, what, what is going on? What is going on? I don't, I think there's more going on than you and I know about. Okay, I just, I feel that. Okay, I feel there's something going on. We just need to pray, saints. You know, this, God's got a plan, though. I'm going to tell you right now. Man may come up with their ideas of what they're going to do, but I'm going to tell you right now. God's going to do something that man can't do anything about. And we're getting ready to see something take place. All right, now I'm going to share these words with you. Um, maybe I'm going to give these this first you. All right. The other day I placed this up. I just happened to read this. He was the same one, Byron Searley, who um, got a vision about California. Remember, I, I put that up about the West Coast. I shared that vision and I put this one up there also about prophetic vision shows two volcanoes erupting in Pacific Northwest. Now, I'm going to read this to you. One prayer he said yesterday, this was in March 28th just a few days ago. Well, I'm prayer yesterday. Now, we stop for a minute. You know what Yellowstone, things that are happening over in that area. Uh, you know, we need to pray for those people that live over in that area. But it says, while I'm prayer yesterday, the Lord showed me a vision, but it was not like any vision I had before. This time I didn't just see or view it in front of me. I experienced just like I was there, he says. What was happening? I'm at loss for words that cannot convey just how horrified and completely overwhelmed I felt from this. The whole thing was so beyond my being able to adequately describe the horror and devastation of what took place. I was able to see, hear, and smell everything, and it was happening all around me, he says. After it was over, I broke down and began sobbing and weeping. My wife came over and put her arms around me. She said, I held my face in my hands and cried over and over. I couldn't help them. I couldn't help them. I tried to help them, but they wouldn't take my hand. I kept trying to reach them to pull them out, but they wouldn't take my hand, he said. And here's the vision he got. i had been praying and began asking the Lord to reveal to me what was coming. I opened my Bible and began to read, and then he said to me, I want to show you this. Write what you see. I picked up my notebook and pen. And instantly, I was at the scene of an event that was taking place, which looked to me like somewhere in the Pacific Northwest. I was standing on a riverbank watching a swollen river with very rough rapids. I thought to myself, while well, I was observing, observing that this must be the spring mountain, I could smell and hear the water that was roaring so loudly and very violently. Then I noticed a large tree float by, then another and another. What was once just violent waters was now filled with debris, trees, and branches. Then the water started turning brown, laid at first, still with all the trees, and it looked like soup. I then noticed the water was now turning darker brown, and then became more muddy, and then thicker mud. I asked what is causing this, as it was now apparent that it was not just a spring melt. I then saw the body of a person floating by me, he said. Face down, I knew he was dead. Then more and more bodies all face down. I cried out to God, what is this? He then took me up a little higher to what seemed about 30 feet up, and I saw thousands of bodies. Some people were alive and clawing at anything to rise above the mud. Some people were riding on the tree logs. They were covered with mud, screaming, and had looks of horror and fear on their faces. I saw some praying and crying out to God to save them. I was then at this time standing on the bank, trying to reach out to anyone I could. I stretched out my hand, but the person would not reach it, for I said, Lord, I'm trying to save them, but they refused my hand. I was then taken up in the air, I saw why the rivers were in torrent. It looked like the northwest. 
I saw lots of smoke and fire everywhere, all over the ground. Everything was on fire. It looked like an earthquake had taken place and destroyed everything I could see. Then the Lord brought my attention to the mountains. I saw what looked like a volcano erupting, causing all the snow to melt and causing the mud to flow. I heard explosions and could smell wood burning and also a sulfur rotten egg kind of smell. I followed the mountain range down and noticed a second volcano erupting. I'm not sure which mountain, but it was very tall. I asked the Lord, when is this going to happen? And he said, very soon, my son, and no one will expect it. He then said to me, tell my people I'm coming soon. Get ready. And then he gives this verse um, in Matthew 24, 78. For a nation will rise against it, and kingdom against kingdom, and in various places there were famines and earthquakes. But all these things are at the beginning of birth pains. Wow. Now, we don't know soon. I believe it's very soon. You know, God's soon and our soon are two different things. Remember, one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day, but I don't believe we have that long. I do believe He's coming very soon. Now, I don't know when, though. I believe we're going to see a great revival first. We're going to see some things take place. God's got to get the church ready. I really, truly believe that. Um... But, you know, this goes along with what I'm going to read you what he gave me today first before I read you yesterday's. He gave me this. I called it, Your house will be shaken. Even I, the Lord, declare shaking is coming to your house today. Are you preparing your hearts for that shaking that's almost here? Open your eyes and you will see what I, the Lord, am doing. This shaking will start from the bottom up to the very top. People and authority will be shaken too. This is not something that will just occur with everyday people. No, this shaking will happen to the rich, famous, and those in the political arena. It will affect everyone, I heard the Lord say. Do not doubt what I, the Lord, am about to do. This shaking that is coming will take place suddenly. You will have no time to prepare. You notice how... In that that vision, there were those that have died suddenly. They couldn't prepare. It just happened. You don't know when your last day is going to be. All right? Your time is now, says the Lord. Everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember those who died in the great flood. I've talked about this before. There's going to be some where people are going to die right on the spot. Well, that's what happened in the great flood. They died just like that. All right? Now, God's not going to flood our earth like that again, but there's going to be something major that's going to happen that people are going to die suddenly. Okay, remember those who died in the great flood you did not believe. That is what will happen with the shaking. Boom! It will kill several, several of you dead on the spot. There will be no time to react. Heed to God's word today. Time is running out quickly, I hear the Lord say. Peace, peace, and sudden destruction, for the Lord has spoken. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3-7 For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape. But you, brother, are not in darkness, so that this day shall not overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober for those who sleep. Sleep at night and those who get drunk are drunk at night. We must stay awake because God's getting ready to do something. We need to be aware of the times that we're living. We all are. And that includes me. We all need to be aware of the times we're living in. Things are about to change. You know, I just want to stop real quick, you know, and tell you, you know, people don't want to hear these type of messages. Now, if you hear about that, that um, Catholic priest, he, he just said there's no how. Can you believe that? He said there is no how, and we're talking about millions of people. Listen to him. And did he have a good Friday service? I was wondering, you know, because normally he's on TV and everybody's watching him. And everybody looks up to the, the Catholic priest, I'm going to tell you right now. So if they think, if he says there's no how, well, there must be no how. That's what people are going to think. And that uh, they're going to be deceived, you know. Now, I don't believe, this is my opinion, the false prophet, I believe he's coming. I believe he could be, uh, I mean, he, he, he is not real. I mean, he is false. Okay, but I'll, I, I don't believe he is the false prophet. My husband said that he's going to be younger. 
Okay, that's what my husband said. I don't know. I don't get into who's the false prophet, who the antichrist is. You know, I don't feel God wants you and I to worry about that. All right, we need to be focused on Jesus and what He's called us to do for today. Okay, that will happen when it's meant to happen. Well, we, the church, need to get right. I'm going to tell you right now. You know, everyone say, "Oh, we're getting ready to leave here." Well, you know what? If Jesus were to come back right this minute, He would not be proud of the church. We're not doing what we're supposed to do. Okay? We're not preaching the Bible. We're taking scriptures on, preaching whatever we want to preach on. We're not walking the walk and doing what God is saying. You know, and God wants to save the church. There are those sitting in the church that know Christ, but are not walking right. We've been listening to false doctrine for years. All right? And there's going to be also, I remember we talked about, um, there's those sitting in these churches that are the hired hand. And there's going to be a great falling away. They're going to be scattered. All right. But I believe if they truly love Jesus, God is going to touch them. Because there could be some sitting in church that really are not born again. You know, they say they believe in Jesus. I know there are people, husbands and wives that go to church. They go to church because they're doing their duty. You know, I was telling my husband just, fixing my hat. I was telling my husband just yesterday, you know, I grew up, we didn't know Jesus, okay? I didn't, we didn't ever have a personal relationship. But I remember, I told you, we always said the dinner, a prayer at dinner. We always said the prayer, um, for the now I lay me down to sleep. We had the prayer, I had the prayer right over my bed. But I will never forget this. Every year, when it came time to um, resurrect to Sunday, Easter, you know, uh, every year, Good Friday, uh, my dad, I'm not kidding. You know, and I didn't know Jesus. And, you know, when you're a teenager, or you're young, I would think, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 years old. You know, my dad made me sit there and watch the great story ever told about Jesus. And I'll never forget this. Every single year, we had to sit there for like, what is that movie? It's like four hours long, you know, and I dreaded it. I hate it. You know, because, you know, when you don't know Jesus and you don't have a person, or a I thought it was boring. I, I was like, I didn't want to sit there. I was like, God, I don't want to watch this. You know, but my dad, and this is in my brain. I remember this as a young kid, you know, sitting. So we always, my dad always uh, talked about God, but we didn't really, I mean, he did a little religious, his religious dude, you know. Like, I, I think, I, I think there were times he would drop us off church, but he wouldn't even go to church. I remember we, were, we as kids played with the pots and pans. I didn't learn anything in Sunday school. But I remember as a child being dropped off, going to church. My dad was always doing his religious duty, you know. And maybe that's what you're doing. You're doing your religious duty. You know, people go to church on Easter. They go on Christmas. They go on major holidays. But yet they don't go to church any other time. You know, maybe you're doing your religious duty. You know, we're not saved by our works. We're saved by God's mercy and grace, you know. It's a free gift. You don't have to do anything to gain salvation, you know. I'm thankful that God loved me a lot to save me. You know, he, he's got my dad first. My dad found out about the Lord, and he told me, and he preached to me, and I didn't listen to him, you know. And it took God. And maybe I've been talking to you, and you're listening to me, and maybe you have not. Yet, giving your heart and life to God. There's time. There's some that will come, and there's some that won't come. You know, I want to share with you. You know, in 2000, I was in a dangerous car accident, brain surgery on the right side of my brain. I should have been dead. I'm a walking miracle. I'm here for a reason, and I give Jesus the glory. You know, because I could have been dead, and that would have been it. You know, people die every single day. They don't think about the tomorrow. They're here one minute, and then they're gone. And you know, nobody thinks about what could happen tomorrow. Have you thought about your life, what you're doing, going here, going there? What could happen if you were to die this very hour? I mean, I'm not talking about getting hit with the car. You could. Maybe you have a major disease, a sickness. Maybe the doctors can't do anything about to help you. You know, Jesus can. Jesus can heal you. All right? You know, maybe you're going through life and you you just don't think about it. You don't think about eternity. You think you know, I know there are some people that think that once they die, they're, they're dead. No, you're not going to die. You're going to live forevermore. You're either going to spend your eternity in heaven with Jesus or in hell. You have to make that decision. God is not going to force you to come to Christ. He's not going to twist your arm. I'm not here to, to try to get you to go to church. Or, I mean, get you to give your life to Christ. I'm not trying to bring fear to you. You know, I know there are people that come to Christ 
because they're afraid. You don't need to be afraid. I say these words to speak the truth to you, to tell you what is coming. All right. I'm not doing these videos to just do a video. Okay. I'm doing them because the Holy Spirit has me do it. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. If God didn't love you and I didn't love Jesus, I wouldn't do it. I love the Lord and I want to obey him. And if I say anything that's incorrect, I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to pray for me. And God knows my heart. I want to speak the truth. I want to do what's right. But if you don't know Christ, today is your day, not tomorrow. But like I was saying, I was going to church. I was heading the way. I haven't had brain surgery on the right side of my brain. I should have been dead. The paramedic happened to be going that way I was going. I'd have been dead. She didn't take me to the hospital. She doesn't even do that work anymore. She was off to driving her own vehicle, not the paramedic. She happened to stop. She held me flat on the, on the seat. There was an angel that protected me that day. You know, and, and I should have been dead. I should have gone right through the windshield. But God spared it. He had a reason. She drove me to the hospital. It was faster. And then I remember I was unconscious. I had dream after dream. I was in, I, was, I think I was unconscious about, I don't know, three or four weeks you know, and I remember them washing the glass on my ear. I think I, I, I was under 100 pounds. God had a miracle, though, you know, and the, the um, doctors would tell my, my husband, I don't know if she's going to make it. And I remember my niece saying, oh, Uncle Dan, she's going to be all right. You know, God spoke through my little niece at the time to encourage my husband. You know, and the first thing Daniel saw when he came into the hospital was more. You know, so the, of course the devil wants to put fear in you. And so, Daniel, this was right around Thanksgiving, you know. That's why Thanksgiving is always special to me. And I give thanks to Jesus because of that. You know, and if you're listening to me, maybe you have not given your heart and life to Christ. Now is your day. Now is your time. Not tomorrow. Our salvation is nearer now than it has ever been. If you do not know the Lord, and maybe you've been listening to me for a long time, and you have not yet committed your heart and life to him, now is the time. Don't wait. Don't keep putting it off for a later date. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. None of us do. We're here one minute and we're gone the next. And just like I was giving you that vision, you know, if something happens, you won't get another opportunity to ask Jesus to save you. Okay, some of those people did, but you may not. You don't know. No man knows. All right? So don't come to Christ out of fear and worry. Come because you're ready. You're ready to turn your heart and life over to Christ. Maybe you've been doing things and they're not working out for you. And you're seeing that. And you're seeing everything that's going on in the news. And you're saying, Lord, I don't know you. I'm hearing all this, but I don't know you. I don't know where I'm going to spend my eternity. You can know today. You can be sure without a shadow of a doubt. God will let you know. Okay? He'll reveal it to you. The scriptures will, will come alive. He'll take the veil off your eyes and you'll be able to see if you want to receive Christ today, I want to pray with you. Bow your head and just repeat this prayer and just mean it in your heart. Oh, just mean God hears you. It's that simple. You don't have to say an eloquent prayer. God knows your heart. He sees your heart. Bow your head with me and say, Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Come into my heart and save me. I believe you died for me, Jesus, to give me eternal life. I receive you now, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer, go and share the good news with someone. Go and tell them what Christ has just done for you. This is the happiest day of your life. The angels are rejoicing and so are we. There is nothing more important going here, going there. It doesn't matter. Life is short. Our world is passing away, as you can see. Prophecy is being fulfilled right before our eyes. So make sure you're right with the Lord. Make sure no matter what you do, you are right with Christ. If you were to die this very hour, that's so important. All right. I'm going to get to this other word that I want to share with you. But I'm going to read this dream that, that a gentleman had, John and Jolene Hamill. Now, he had this dream back in May of last year, 2016. And remember, I um, spoke uh, to um, General Casey, who is the Secretary of Energy, and he wrote a letter to President Donald Trump about the earthquake. And remember, I woke up that same time, I think it was May 3rd, what day was I don't, I don't think I have it on here. 
pizza that time. Not that it matters. It was in May sometime. I woke up. I don't have it right now. I woke up and I gave that um that that dream I had. Um, not a dream. I mean, I gave up that word at 3 a.m. about move away from the West Coast that God spoke to me. You know, that's the way the Holy Spirit speaks to me. He speaks to me face to face, and I give Jesus the glory. I don't get a lot of dreams. I do get dreams, not a lot. I do get visions too now. You know, pray for me. I want more. But I get mostly Him talking to me. You know, there's times I'll wake up, I'll go to the restroom, I'll get back, and as soon as I lay my head down on the pillow, boom. He gives me a word. He speaks to me. And then I go to the computer and I ask the Lord, Holy Spirit, is there anything you want to say to me? And that's when God starts giving me words. All right. So I'm going to read you this dream, this person now. And then I'm going to give you an interpretation. Okay. He didn't interpret it the way I did. This was from Elijah. Listen, remember I told you, be careful what you're taking in. All right. So I listened to what he said. But the Holy Spirit starts speaking to me. All right, he had this dream on May 21st, 2016. This guy named John Hamlin. Dream with Donald Trump, new threats for victory. The dream included Donald Trump. Now I'm going to stop when God speaks to me about something I want to share with you. The dream included Donald Trump. The beginning of the dream had something to do with a train station. But I cannot remember the details. Maybe that means it's going to be moving fast. I don't know. The train, you know, you know, a train moves fast. So it could be mean that it's going to be going fast. It's going to happen quickly. But I can't remember, he says. Then Jolie and I were in the stands of a baseball field for battling practice. The team seemed to be owned by Donald Trump, but he was also one of the players. I wasn't on the field. But we were friends with Trump and helped guide the team to advance. And I believe that God is going to raise up Christians that are going to help our president in these end days. We were observing violent practice. Talking with another friend named Julie. She and her husband are mighty prayer warriors who are also successful in business. I can comment to Julie. It's incredible that the man is 70 years old, yet hits almost every ball so strongly. She replied, yeah, that is so true. I then said, he doesn't always hit the ball out of the park, but he always hits in the outfield and always gets on base. I felt it was important to introduce Donald Trump to Julie, so I walked on the field to summon him. You know, and I feel there's going to be prayer wars and people that are going to meet President Donald Trump. You know, if God's given you an interpretation of this dream, please let me know. Write it down. I want to hear what God's saying to you. Because, you know, I'm taking all this in. You know, I'm learning just like you're learning. But you may have a gift of interpretation. I want to hear what God's saying to you. Um, if I can fit that dream on there, I may go back and put it on there. All right? I don't know if I can, but I'll see if I can. Um, so, so she said down there. They said I felt it was important to introduce Donald Trump to Julie, so I walked on the field summoning. And like I said, I believe he's going to meet a lot of mighty prayer wars people that are going to be introduced to President Donald Trump. I went to look over and see Donald Trump already talking with Julie. I noticed. I noted how he intu intuitively recognizes and connects with success. Then listen to this. In the final part, now this is Heaven's Horses Resolve a Fierce Light. In the final part of the dream, we were leaving the field after a battling practice. Batting practice. I heard and felt the ground shake. Ooh. Now could that be the shaking that is coming? No, they don't talk about that. But I'm telling you, there is a shaking that's coming. Because he said he felt the ground shake. Now, I believe it's going to be more than one thing. I believe it could be something that's going to cause these earthquakes to shake. I believe it's going to be the economy. And David Wilkerson talked about it. Looking up, I saw two white horses. Now, we know that Jesus is, is rides on the white horse. I heard about, he said... Looking up, I saw two white horses, strong steeds, galloping right towards us on the field. 
One especially was looking right at me with a look in its eyes. I can only describe as a resolve of fierce delight. Now is that Jesus coming for us? Hey, is he going to get us out of here before this takes place? Before this shaking? Hmm, I was just thinking about that. Maybe it, maybe, um, maybe, like I was telling you before, there is going to be something with the economy that, that God's going to allow happen. And maybe we're going to get out of here before the shaking comes. Or during the shaking. I don't know. I don't really know. But you tell me what God's saying to you. Okay, because he, those horses were riding towards him. One especially was looking right at me with a look in his eyes I can only describe as a resolve of fear so light. My instinct was to get out of the way. But they were coming so quickly. Now, I, could this be the storm that's coming quickly? And before I even could move, this one horse raced right to me and thrust his head into my hands and chest and truly embrace him. Could that be the Lord coming to us? I mean, are we going to go through the storm and, and Jesus is going to protect and watch over us through it? What is he saying to you? Please tell me. I'd like to know. I mean, this is an incredible dream. I believe it has some meaning here. At that time, Donald Trump, he said, was walking by wearing a blue blazer tan pants and a red hat like the one he always wears which says make America great again he seemed completely absorbed in thought with the team but walking alone now if you remember I did a video about God's getting ready to cleanse the United States and I said to you don't walk away from President Donald Trump if God has placed him in office whether you voted for him or not we need to be praying for him that he makes the right decisions because whatever decisions he makes affect you and I. And God tells us we're to respect those in authority. So, but it's, he said he saw him walking alone. So, are people going to walk away from President Donald Trump? Sarah Trump came over, nodded, small, and said very simply, You've got to keep praying for me. Then I woke up. Now, this was an incredible dream that I read. I got to share it with my dad in this area. But if God is saying something to you, please put down whatever he's saying to you. Because I'd like to know. I really would. You know, because it, I believe it may have something to do with either us going through something. And God's going to, what did he say? Keep it, where, let me get back to this. Where he said that my head, the horse right, it thrust his head into my hands and chest. Now, is God going to protect you and I through the storm? Are we going to get out during the storm? Are we going to get out before the storm? I mean, the white horse has to do with God, with Jesus, I believe. So, I believe, so, I don't know, just you tell me whatever God's saying to you. I'd like to know. Let me share this word with you that, um, that I got yesterday, okay? And I'm just going to read it because this is what he shared with me. I mean, the Holy Spirit's been teaching me. He gave me a now analogy with a scripture, and it's really interesting. Um, I called it America is about to take a turn for the worse. I see the market dropping, and I've said more than once the market's gonna drop. Free falling, I hear the Lord say. I heard him say free falling. I looked up the word free falling. It means rapid, uncontrolled decline. Fall rapidly. So something's going to happen that's going to cause our economy to collapse. Just like that. Boom. And David Wilkinson said that too. Alright. The Dow is going to crash right on the spot. Something I sense in my spirit is going to cause it to crash suddenly. Now could it be that earthquake? Could it be the volcanoes? Could it be the the um the ring of fire? I mean, we're it could be a lot of things. Could it be a missile? Could it be the sun? An EMP? Had a, it could be anything. Then I heard this: jobs will be scarce, and unemployment will be on the rise. Hard days are coming, says the Lord. Very hard days. The days are coming upon America. The days that are coming upon America have never been heard of in history. I'm just telling you what I heard God say to me. 
everything will spin out of control, I heard him say. Chaos and fighting will be in the streets. There will be people with handguns and knives. The only one that will protect God's children is the Lord. Fear not, says the Lord. I will protect you and keep you safe in this hour of trial. This hour of trial has come, says the Lord. It is here and now. Prepare the way for your soon coming king. I, the Lord, am coming soon. Hold on to your crown, says the Lord, so that no man or circumstance can steal it from you. You are an overcomer, says the Lord. In your mouth is a two-edged sword, dividing between soul and marrow. Do not let the enemy win the race. You and I overcome him by the word of our mouth and our testimony that's in our hearts. I believe something's going to happen that's going to cause fear. I believe we're going to be going through something safe. I just do. I believe we're going to be going through something. I've said this before. We're going to be waiting on the Lord for Jesus to come and get us out of here. Hebrews 4.12 for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. You know why I believe we're going to go through this and it keeps telling me this because God has been training Daniel and I up for this hour, for this very purpose, not just us. I believe you're being trained. God is training you as well. We're going to go through something. And remember, I told you, he said, you're going to have wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquake. And he said, a famine. This is only the beginning of sorrows. He didn't say the end. The beginning. So it's not over yet. We're going to be waiting, I believe, on the Lord. And that's why every time I think he's going to do something, he keeps making us wait, wait, wait. wait. Good God, wait, God, win. And we're just sitting there waiting because I believe we're going to have to encourage you. We're going to have to cheer you on to keep going. Just like I told you, my girlfriend, she's a cheerleader. Oh, I'm not a cheerleader. I'm an encourager. I'm going to encourage you. Just like Paul, he encouraged the people. And we're going to have to encourage you because we're going to go through something. I truly believe that we're going to go through our days. But God will give us the grace and the strength to do whatever we got to do. But he'll come and he'll get us out of here. He's a faithful God. He's never left Daniel and I. He's always provided our needs. He's always taking care of us. I believe there are going to be many. They're going to want to die. They're not even going to want to live. Why, why in the Bible says they, they went to the mountains and the rocks, they fall upon us. It's going to get really bad. They're not going to even want to live. I mean, people already I'm seeing on Facebook, they're like, I can't do this anymore. I'm tired. I know I've said that. I said, God, I'm spiritually tired. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to pray anymore. I don't want to believe no more. I don't have any more in me to keep believing. You're not alone. Okay, you're not alone. If you're listening to me, I'm here to tell you, you're not alone. God is training you. He's getting you ready so that you can be strong for the days ahead so that you can encourage your brother or sister do you hear me i'm talking to some of you some of you that are on facebook and feel like you're going to faint and you're not going to be able to make it yes you will there are going to be those that are going to want to give up you're going to have to pull them along you're going to have to encourage them you're going to have to help them father i pray for all of us oh god that you would help us lord to be strong in the days ahead that you would encourage our hearts lord so that we can encourage one another Lord, we have to stick together. The Christians have to encourage one another. They see the return of Jesus Christ. Your return is coming, Lord. We don't know when. We know it's coming soon, Lord. And we get our eyes fixed upon you, Lord, not turning to the right or left, but staying upon you because you will come at a day when we don't expect in Jesus' name. I believe that. We'll see him up in the clouds. He'll come and get us when we don't know it. There's going to be left people left here. They're going to die. And the only way you're going to be able to save is if you receive a right hand, mark in your right hand on your forehead. Because food, you're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to get any food. Now, I don't know. We're going to see the most miracles with the food here. And then we're going to see this take place here. And we're going to see, remember I told you about the falling away and about 
to the banter of Christ, the man of perdition revealed. Are we going to see some of this? And then, boom, Jesus is going to get us out of here in between in this. And then people aren't going to be able to buy or sell food. I mean, they're not going to be able to get any food, multiplication of food. I mean, because God's got his people that he's going to use in these last days. Remember, he said, to believe you will do greater miracles. Is that going to happen while we're here? And then, boom, we're going to be out of here. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to play out. Only Jesus knows. Okay? And those that try to interpret Revelation don't know. Don't listen to them. Look to Jesus. Let the Holy Spirit give you revelation. Let him give you discernment. Lord, we pray for more discernment, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that we walk in your ways and that you would speak to us. Lord, we don't want to listen to a man and hear what man has to say. Father, we want to hear your words, Lord. Speak to our hearts, Lord. We need to seek you, O oh God. Your children need to seek you in these last days. This is the hour, Lord. We need to seek you, Lord. We need to get on our knees and we need to pray. We need to seek you with our whole heart, Lord. Then you will speak to us, Lord, in Jesus' name. That's what you need to do. You need to seek it. And remember, God doesn't speak when you want him to speak, okay? You know, everybody has a dream. Everybody's saying, oh, God said this, God said that. I'll tell you right now, God is very quiet. He speaks when he wants to speak. Okay? If your heart is pure and you love God and you're seeking him with all your heart, he's going to speak to you. I'm going to tell you, he's going to talk to you. If you're waiting on God and you don't want to move unless he's showing you, he'll show you. Okay? If you step on faith, he'll show you if, hey, that's not it. I remember I told you, a lady uh, was offering me a job. All right? And I'm like, God, I don't want to do that job. And, you know, he'll give you signs, too. Because they were supposed to pick me up Thursday, Friday. They never did. All right? Daniel and I even tried to stay awake. And, you know, when God has called you to do something, he'll give you grace to do it. When the time comes, like when we were pushed out into the um, public storage, Daniel and I had all this grace to do it. I mean, it was, it was easy because God... God was in it. We didn't do it on our own. We leaned upon the Lord. And God put everything right in our area, right there. I mean, we were able to take a shower in the fitness place. I set up our public storage like an apartment. I'm not kidding. It looked like an apartment. We stayed there, I don't know, a few days? A week, I mean, a week. And then my girlfriend gave me God's. But God will give you the grace and strength when the time comes. If you're in His will. And you're doing what it's called. If you're doing... Your own will. No, he's not going to help you. He doesn't have to help you. He's going to get you to the point where you say, Okay, God, you have your will. Not my will, but your will be done. Because you're doing it yourself. If you're trying to do it yourself, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you're doing his will, he's going to give you grace and straight to do it. Now, if I would have done that and it wasn't God's calling, then he wouldn't have helped me do it. Okay? But I didn't feel led in my heart that that was what God wanted me to do. And my husband, he listens to me. Yeah, we need money. I mean, we're not working anymore. I mean, I was getting a little money helping the roommate. All right? I get money from the government. If you'd like to help us, you can. You can uh, send a gift to heartboutcorner10 at gmail.com. That's my email, heartboutcorner10 at gmail.com. You can give a gift through PayPal. It'll come directly to us. If you want a gift to Daniel and I, say this gift is for Daniel and Dawn O'Brien, you can send it to Dawn's Heartbelt Corner, P.O. Box 161273, Altamont Springs, Florida 32716. Um, it's also on our YouTube, on their about screen, on, on www.dawnsheartbeltcorner. All the information is on there. If you feel led in your heart that you want to help us and you know that you're seeing that God is getting ready to use us in a great big way, and He is, and Jesus gets all the glory. Now, let me tell you something. The people that, that used to live here, they gave me rent. But they didn't give me half of the rent. And they're supposed to because they're, they're on the lease, I'm on the lease. But you know something? I didn't fight. God told me to be quiet. He said, I'll take care of it. That's why I'm coming to you. Now, if God is talking to you, though, I'm asking you to be obedient to the Lord. Not me, to the Lord. Because God sees. All right? You know, I give Jesus glory. We're doing his will. This is his will. Do you understand that? I'm a watchman. This is where I'm called. I know it is. This is what God's called me to do. Doing this video, warning. Now, if I would have done that job, got worn out, got tired, I wouldn't be able to speak and share with you what God is telling me to do. Now, there's times I get upset. God, I'm like, God, I'm not doing another video. You know, you're not helping us. 
you know, but you know, God knows. And when it's right, he will do it like that. So I'm a being, I'm doing God's will. Faith without works is dead. I do these videos in faith, knowing that God's about to move. You have to do your works in faith and believe. Have faith. What's the faith? Some of the things hoped for, but yet not see. No, I don't see it yet, but it's coming. The miracle's coming. The promise is about to be fulfilled. Has God given you a vision? Has he given you a promise? Hold on to that vision. Hold on to that promise. Don't get throw it away. Don't let the enemy speak negative into your ear. Tell me he's a liar. Tell him, get behind me in the name of Jesus, Satan. He has no power over you. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. You don't answer to him. You don't answer to anyone else. You answer to Jesus. That's all that matters. Praise the Lord. All right. Let me get back to this word. So we're talking about what he was talking to me about the economy. So I believe we're going to go through something. All right. This is what he said. It's very, very important you listen because this was a word he gave me. He's speaking to me, but he's speaking to you as well. Okay. I know it was God because he gave me a scripture to go along with it. And it's the Holy Spirit speaking. He said, you have a testimony. All right. You have a testimony. I have a testimony. You have a testimony. Share your testimony with others, says the Lord. Speak loudly and boldly to so all will hear and know. You are a light that is not hidden, says the Lord. You, you were in hiding, but I, the Lord, have set you free from your confinement. There are those that are confined. You're getting ready to be set free. Do not shun in yourselves away from the public eye. This is a time for me, King Jesus, to use you. The enemy wants to draw my children into fear, I heard him say. Perfect love drives out fear. Do not be afraid. See, God is, wants you to speak and share your testimony. But something's going to happen that's going to cause you to be afraid, to fear. That's not a time you shone in, okay, and you don't speak. No, that's a time for you to speak. And he gave me this scripture. Then God showed me in this in the Bible where the man hid the talent. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. If you want to turn with me in the Bible. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. The parable of the challenge. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Verse 15. And to the one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Verse 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Verse 17, And likewise, he who had received two gained two more. Also, verse 18, But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. Verse 19, After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. Verse 20, So he so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I've gained five more talents besides them. Verse 21, his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Verse 22, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said, And well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 24. Then he would receive the one talent, came and said, Lord, I knew you had to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown, and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Verse 25, and I was afraid. See, there it is. He was afraid. Are you afraid? Don't be afraid. Because fear is what's going to strike people. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. Verse 26, but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown, gather where I have not scattered seed. 
Verse 27, so you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my, my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. And see, if you don't do what God has called you to do, he'll give it to somebody else. Somebody else will do it. God was showing me this. Verse 29, for to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. Verse 30, and cast the unprofitable servant into the utter darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You know, I want you to know God will protect you. God will not allow anything to happen to you. He sees what is going on. You just need to speak whatever the Holy Spirit is telling you to speak. So, Father, I pray for all of us, Lord. I come against that spirit of fear and worry and, and any of us that's going to want to strike, to want to make us be quiet, not share our testimony, not speak the true gospel, Lord. I truly believe the enemy is going to try to come against your people to get them to shut up. But, Father, I'm praying, Lord, for all of us, including myself, that we'll be obedient, Lord, so that when we stand before you, you'll say, well done, my good and faithful sons and daughters, in Jesus' name. I said, you can't hide what God has taught you. A city on a hill is not hidden. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. If you don't, if you do, you are being disobedient. Anyone that knows the good he ought to do and does not do it in the Bible, they call it sin. That's what it says in the Bible. If you don't do what God has asked you to do, it's called sin. All right? Do you want God to be displeased with you on Judgment Day, I said. Do you want God to say, away from me, you evildoers, because you did not do what God has asked you to do? Or do you want to hear your Heavenly Father say, my good and faithful servant, come enter into my kingdom and enjoy pleasures forevermore? You cannot just obey God on part of the Bible and take out those scriptures you don't want to speak on because you're afraid of persecution. Now I'm going to stop here and I've said it before. Pastors, if you're preaching to your congregation, it's important that you preach the truth. You'll preach the whole gospel. Because if not, you might as well get out of that the get out of that pulpit. You have no business standing up in that pulpit. Okay? Because when you stand before the Lord, He's gonna ask you, What did you do? Were you too afraid? Did you hid the talent? Did you hide those scriptures and say, Oh, I'm not gonna share it? Because you're too afraid, people won't give, I'm going to be persecuted, he's going to stay away from me. Alright, you know what, it talks about, you did all this in my name, but I never knew you. Okay, I'm talking to some of you pastors and you're listening to me. It's time you be obedient, it's time you do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Father, I pray for all the pastors right now. I lift them up to you right now in Jesus' name. I ask for boldness upon them. Boldness to come upon them, Lord. Touch them, oh God, with the bone, with the fire of God. May they have in Jesus' name to speak forth your word, Lord, and that nothing will stop them, Lord. That they'll stand up strong like a mighty tower, Lord, built on the star like Christ Jesus, and that they'll speak to their congregation in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. That's for some of you. And you need to stand up. Now is the time. Stand up and speak boldly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right. He said to me, Children, you will be persecuted. Jesus was a pure example of persecution. Did you ask to be like Jesus? If you if so, do not be surprised if you're persecuted. Light and darkness have nothing in common. So why are we trying to fit in with the world? Jesus said, come out and be separate. Touch on one clean thing and I'll receive you. Okay, it's time that we Christians come out of the world. We are not to be like the world. All right?
Light and darkness have nothing in common. God has pulled you out of darkness and has brought you into his light. Praise God, you have been set free. Him, the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. You are free. You're not like the world. God's changed you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Don't try to fit in with the world. Don't love the things of the world, material things, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. We need to come out. Put all that aside. We need to love Jesus. Put him number one. Die to the things of this world. Because I'm going to tell you right now, our world is passing away. And it's going quickly. You're seeing it. It's happening right before your eyes. Don't hold on to the world. Don't be lost, like lost away. Turn back and want to stay. Because I'm going to tell you, it's time to go. You need to be ready to go. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm ready to get out of here. Because there's nothing here. There's nothing but sadness. I mean, every time you turn the news on, there's violence. There's something happening. All right? Our hope is Jesus, though. I know there are Christians that's, that are ready to leave. Yeah, we're all ready to go. But we can't go until our job is completed. But you have a hope. Share your hope of Jesus with others. Give them hope. Give the world hope. Share your testimony. Do you hear me? Don't worry about getting out of here. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus will come. Jesus will come and get us. But stop focusing your whole walk on going home. God wants to use you. Do you hear me? God wants you to share your testimony. He wants you to give you hope. we got a world out there that is dying. I mean, there are people still in this world that do not know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you need to share your testimony. All right. He gave me Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Verse 12, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. They're always persecuting me. I get it on YouTube. They always call me freak. They, oh, you're crazy. It's some, I put the words on the White House. They all they call me a freak. You're crazy. You're this. You're that. I've been told to go into a mental institution. <laughs> and you know what? I said, go ahead. Keep persecuting. My reward's getting bigger. Praise the Lord. You know, I'm getting stronger. I'm not going to let it bother me. I said, God, help me. Lord, I pray you help all of us in these last days. We're going to be persecuted. Others are being persecuted in other countries, Lord. Help us to stand up, Lord. Speak your words in truth. Because I'm going to tell you, if we don't do it, Lord, the devil's going to do it. So we Christians, we're going to speak loudly in Jesus' name. I'm going to tell you right now, for those that say, oh, you're too loud. You're this, you're that. You better get ready. Heaven's going to be loud. There's going to be a lot of worshiping. There's going to be a lot of praising. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm loud. I'm going to tell you. I'm bold. I'm strong. I'm going to speak the truth. Whether you want to hear it or not. If you don't like it, oh, well. Turn it off. Don't listen to it. Don't tell me to go somewhere because you want to know. I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to get louder. I'm going to get louder. I'm going to speak that word boldly because that is what God has commanded us to do. Hallelujah. I can I can feel the power of God right here right now. Hallelujah. All right. This is, you know, God says things to me sometimes. I'm like, God, what are you saying? You know, he said taxes are going to go skyrocket. That's what I heard him say. I sense in my spirit there is going to be a tax deficit. Now, I don't understand. What, I'm like, God, what is that? The Trump administration is trying to cut taxes. The Lord was saying, but in reality, this will cause taxes to rise, I heard him say. I know nothing about taxes, but this is what I heard. Okay, I don't know nothing. I'm, I'm being honest with you. I don't know nothing. Stocks are going to fall, he said to me. If you have any money in the stock market, now is your time to take all of your money out of the stock market or are you, or you are going to lose it. And I've said this to you before, okay, but we're near now to God getting ready to do something. If you have money in the stock market, you better take it out. You're going to lose it. If you leave it there, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to lose it. I'm going to let you know. I mean, money is not going to be worth anything. I've got some of my money stored up in a vault. <laughs> I keep it here in the house. All right. Things are going to happen. 
This is a warning I'm sharing with you ahead of time. I know I said it early, but now I say it again. We are moving very close to something major taking place. Do not put your trust in the money system. I've said that before. Don't put your trust in the money system. It's not going to be worth anything. Place your trust in the Lord. Our world is passing away. The Bible speaks on I've read this before. Do not love the world. I was just talking about it. 1 John 2, 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17, And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Isn't that awesome? As long as you do the will of God, you're going to abide forever. You're going to live forever. Stop living in the, for the world. Alright? Prepare now for a major fall in the economy. I've spoken about this several times. Words that God has given me. I have. I've shared it with you. I keep reiterating. I keep telling you over and over again. Remember, Jerry first, because everyone had a favorite message. I said, God, you're not saying that to me. What are you saying? He said, my winning fork is in my hand. I'm getting ready to clear my threshing floor. Ew. And I looked up threshing means shake. He's getting ready to shake things up. Then, for the end of the year, he gave me hard days are ahead of you, my children, in 2018. Make sure your foundation is secure. We've spoken on this before. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, build on the rock. Pastors, I just said that, build on the rock. Therefore, whoever hears these things of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Verse 25, And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Are you founded on the rock, Christ Jesus, or are you founded on the sand? Verse 26, But everyone who hears these things might, it does not do them. If you're listening, you're not doing them. It's time you do them. Prodigal son or daughter, it's time you come back to the Lord. Say, God, bring me back. Forgive me. I haven't been following you. Just go to God. Pray that. Tell him. But everyone who hears these things of mine does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. Verse 27. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it fell. And great was its fall. What is your foundation? I said built upon. The world or upon Jesus Christ and the word of God. What's your foundation built upon? Think about it. What? What is your foundation built on? What are you doing with your life? Are you just going here, going there, living your life? Now I'm thinking about tomorrow. We're here with men, gone the next. What are you doing with your life? Maybe you're listening. You still have not given your heart and life to Christ. Now it's time. Don't wait. The prayer is up on the screen. You can do it now. Don't make excuses, okay? You can't give Jesus an excuse. I'm not here to tell you. When you stand before the Lord, you're not going to tell Jesus some excuse and he's going to listen to you. You can't say I never heard because you did. Prophet is Donald O'Brien, servant of the Lord, is giving you a word. You can't say you have not heard. You're lying. And they'll stay away from me. I don't know you. You have heard the word of the Lord. God has spoken to you. Now it's up to you to decide what are you going to do with it. Are you going to ignore it? Or are you going to obey the Lord? You cannot lie to God. I don't care who you are, what you've done. Can't make excuses and say, well, these Christians are not walking. He's Don't worry about that. Worry about yourself. God said we're each supposed to worry about ourselves. Quit worrying about other people. Now, like I told you, the news media, worry about Trump. Forget about Trump, all right? What about Obama? Okay, we're not going to get into that. Worry about yourself. Quit worrying about what this other person is doing. What are you doing with your life? You're going to have to answer. You're not going to answer for your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, your girlfriend. You know, maybe your husband or wife's not going to church and you're blaming on them. No, you can't blame on them, Christian. Maybe you're you're saved, but your husband's not saved. All right? Maybe you're listening and you don't know Christ. You can't blame it on no one else. Maybe you had somebody talking to you and you just kept ignoring it. You have no excuses, all right? 
If your life is not built upon the Lord, it's going to crash when the comet falls and your little world comes falling down upon you. I've told you that before. I keep telling you. God is warning you. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord of hosts, the King of Kings. We're going to serve God no matter what. In a minute, we're going to sing that song. I've decided to follow Jesus. You better make your decision. You better make your decision today. Are you going to follow Jesus or are you going to follow the world? Because I'm going to tell you right now, you follow the world, the broad path, you're on your way to hell. Remember those fires in California? I couldn't believe it. I remember seeing all these people going down the highway, fire in the background. God showed me, they're on their way to hell. Are you going to follow the broad path, follow everyone else, or are you going to be different? It's time you be different, Christian. It's time you be different, set apart. It's time you not be like everyone else. You know, nobody likes me because I'm not like everyone else. I don't want to be like everyone else. I don't want to be like another pastor. If you can compare me to anything, most of all, Jesus Christ. Secondly, the disciples. I don't want to be compared to another pastor. I don't want to be compared to nobody but Jesus. That's who we're to strive to be like Jesus. No, I'm not perfect. None of us are. We're all changing from glory to glory. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let me say what else. Jesus loves you, I said, enough to warn you ahead of time what is almost here. I have been warning for years now, but no one's listening. I've been warning you over and over and over. I keep coming on here and warning. I've warned the United States. I've sent President Trump letters. They're ignoring. They're not paying attention. And that's dangerous. We're ignoring what God is trying to say. Because he loves you and I enough to tell us. But if we don't listen, like remember I told you, when you were kids, your parents discipline you, what more will our Heavenly Father do? He will discipline us. And when he does, it ain't fun. I'm going to tell you right now. My dad did that. He you know, took off the belt. We didn't listen. He gave us a warning. Then give us those eyes. And then take off that belt. We knew we were getting it. Me and my brother were getting it. All right. And our Heavenly Father, I'm going to tell you right now, we don't listen. He's going to. He does it gently, gets a little more tougher, and then boom, and it's going to happen. And when it happens, watch out. It ain't going to be no fun. I said, the time's almost up. The time is almost upon us. Will you serve Christ or yourself in these last days? Make your decision careful. It will affect you for all eternity. I've said this. It's going to affect you. There are those that do not believe in a heaven or hell. All right? And we already pray. I told you about my car accident. All right. All right. I basically told everything. You know, I, I want to be led by spirit. It's all about Christ. You know, I say what he wants me to say. I think that's it. I'm going to read you a poem. And then, then we're going to hear that song and then we're going to come back and pray. Run with the vision. Run with the vision, says the Lord. I place a vision in your heart. Wait until I say go, then you start. Run, 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 says the Lord. Awaken the people with my words. Speak boldly and loudly. Let your voices be heard. I am the way, the life, and truth. My miracles performed are the living proof. Amen. Jesus is coming soon. That's right. Jesus is coming soon. It could be morning, night, or noon. Do not be left behind. You will look for him but not be able to find. Prepare the way. He could come this very day. No man knows it's a day or hour. When Jesus returns, it will be with great power. Hallelujah. That day will close on you fast. It will be here at last. Call on Christ's estate. Many will not listen but die. It will be too late. Romans 13, 11 through 14. The day is near. And do this understanding in the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual morality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. All right. We're going to play our declaration song, and then we're going to pray. I have decided. Make your decision today. Follow Jesus. I have.
have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before. Yes, the world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning. And let's pray for what's coming. God only knows. Father, we just come together as a Bible, as a body of believers, Lord. We're praying right now. Father, we lift up America, oh God. We pray for America, Lord. Father, you keep showing me these things that are getting ready to take place, Lord. I ask, Father, that we be prepared and ready, whatever is going to happen, oh God. Keep your people safe, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around your people, Lord. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, Lord. We pray for America. We pray for the souls that don't know you, Lord, that they'll give their hearts and lives to you, Lord. These are the last days, Lord. We pray for salvation for those that don't know you. We pray for a mighty move of your spirit, revival in our nation. We lift up President Donald Trump, the Trump administration, Lord. I pray that all the warnings that I've written and that others have said that they'll reach the White House and that we'll turn back to you, Lord, and that we'll see that we need you, Lord, and cry out to you and repent of our wicked ways, Lord. We pray for Israel. We lift up Israel, Lord. We pray for your protection around them, Lord. They're fighting with the Palestinians, Lord. Forgive America for not standing with them, trying to separate that nation of Israel with the, the Palestinian country, Lord. Father, you know what's getting ready to happen, Lord. I ask that your hand be upon us. Keep us safe. Provide for us food, water, shelter, Lord. And I pray for the people that have work and jobs. Lord, help them to trust you, Lord. The chaos and fighting, Lord. Help us not to be afraid, Lord. But to stand strong in these last days and do what it is you're asking us to do. To share our testimony with others, Lord. To be strong, Father, for the days ahead. Father, we thank you and praise you. Now we ask that you go with us, Lord, and keep us safe, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now I want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. Keep us in your prayers. Keep your eyes on the Lord. I believe something is coming anytime now. I do believe that. 
we're waiting on the Lord. We're watchmen waiting on God, and I know there are other watchmen waiting. All right, until we meet again, this is Prophetess Dawn O'Brien, Sermon of the Lord with Dawn's Heartfelt Point. God bless you. Have a safe and blessed Saturday and resurrected Sunday. Talk to you soon. God bless.